What's going on, everybody? Tom Chattelbash here. I am here today with another guest on this YouTube reviewer interview segment. And today I am joined by a very special guest, Adam Ollinger of the Adam Does Movies channel. And today we're going to dive right into his channel, his success, some tips he has, kind of his background. And before we get into that review, Adam, how are you today? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Not too shabby. Happy Halloween, since this is what we're recording on. Of course, we're those two people that will record an interview on Halloween. Of course. Right. So of course. Do it. So, so the first thing I wanted to ask you about, and it's always kind of that first question I like to get straight out of the gate, is what's your background? Like, I've known you for a while, but I don't think I've actually known your origin story of kind of like what led to the development of your channel, your whole movie feud segment. So just take us all through that little history. The whole process. The, the whole, whole creative from process. From infancy to now. The, yeah. Absolutely. Um, well, I'm a web developer and designer, oh, so cool. by, by, by trade, that's my actual working job. Okay. Um, and so I've been doing that for 11 or 12 years now. I've been at, this is, I think, the fifth web firm I've been at for, I guess, I guess I'm going on five years. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's it, it's fun. You know, it, you, you kind of, you mix and match design and development. Uh, it, it keeps things fresh and not so boring and, and stagnant. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know where I should look. Should I look at my camera? Like in the audience <laughs> Whatever like, you feel comfortable with. I don't, ever, I don't really do these ever. So I eye appreciate contact you. isn't for everyone, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you reaching out. Well, I'm making eye contact with you, Tom. Yeah, yeah, I feel that. Yeah, Because I'm looking at your face, but I'm probably not looking up here. So I think we're equally not doing the right thing. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, I was doing that in my last web firm. Um, I, I had a buddy, Corey Williamson, who, who I still keep in contact with. He's a good guy. And we would talk movies all the time. And, I, you know, I'm a big movie buff like you are. So I like finding that one person I can at least have an, an argument with about movies right. or an engagement with. And uh, we found the arguments were more fun than the, just oh, yeah. being on movies. So, you know, I was a fan of Siskel and Eber back in the day. And uh, I didn't really... I still don't really watch a lot of YouTube, so I, I, don't, I don't really know a lot of what happens on YouTube, YouTube outside of my little echo chamber of, of things right. I do. Um, but, but we were talking, like, we should do a show where we just, you know, we just debate movies. There hasn't really been like that. And then we, we did some research, looked around. I actually found some of your videos. I found some of, uh, you know, Chris Stuckman, Jeremy Johns, the uh, Flickinger, all, all the kind of the OG uh, YouTube yeah, right. And so there was that segment of people, and then there was this other kind of weird angle of nostalgia critic. I don't know if you know who he is. Yeah, 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 I know. He's a fucker, I think, and um, angry video game nerd. And some of those guys, all mm -hmm. and angry Joe, they all had this other wow, kind of- angry video game nerd. That's a throwback. Wow. That's a throwback. Yeah, it makes you feel, feel old, doesn't it? Um, mm -hmm. But that kind of, uh, that was more entertainment mixed with movie reviews, and you guys right. were more just kind of- not analytical, but more just kind of casual, mm -hmm. you know, friendly talking to the camera movie reviews. Right. And so we were thinking, there's already a lot of this stuff out there. How are we going to, you know, find our niche? Uh, so we decided let's let's debate two movies against each other or one movie and we'll pick a side. And so that was where the whole movie feeds thing came from. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I have my job and then I was also trying to balance doing the YouTube thing right. just as for fun. Mm hmm. I don't know if I answered your question at all. No, I think you did. You took us <laughs> in the backstory. You told us the I drunk history. <laughs> I watched your last interview with uh, with John, and um, he, you guys would go on these little kind of micro tangents, but it was really nothing. And you're like, we got to focus. Uh, yeah, all I was thinking was, time I would forget what I asked him, and I, I would be totally okay with that because we just go on a fun tangent. So, like, if you completely forget what question I ask, <laughs> I'm probably in the same boat as you. <laughs> well, all I was thinking was, you guys stayed really focused. I mean, obviously, you haven't talked to me before because no. I'll, I'll go like three different ways, and you'll forget what what uh, what we even. And this train's gonna go off the rails, but I'm totally okay with that. <laughs> So the next question I wanted to ask you, because you developed the movie feuds thing, which I think is great. Yep. And I also think it's very unique because when I first saw your videos, that was something I had completely never seen before on YouTube. And I thought it was really cool because sometimes you would have a movie versus its sequel or a right. movie versus another movie or a franchise versus another franchise. Uh, not to be too braggadocious, but I did star in one of your episodes. You did. That's right. Yeah, that was fun. Um, but what I really wanted to know is like when you were perfecting that, uh, that concept, like what were some of those kind of blunders that maybe you made out of the gate that were like, oh, I wish I didn't do this. I wish I kind of honed this, you know, from the beginning. God, there's so many. I still do. <laughs> I still do them. I, I think the big one was, you know, I, 
you're, you're, you have a, a group of people and friends and they're like, you're, you're really funny you, and you know a lot about movies. You should do a show. So you already get in your head that I'm better than everybody else that's doing this already. So you go on there and, you know, the first 30, 40 videos, maybe I'm even being generous, probably first 100 videos, I, I, I already had that mindset where people know I'm funny. Strangers know I'm funny. Mm -hmm. So I would kind of be very serious and like, you know, writing notes on papers that had nothing on them and just, right. I, I, I don't know, you, you get in a headspace where it's like, why people should know me and they should know that I'm funny and that I'm doing something cool, but they right. don't, they don't mm -hmm. know you, you have to prove yourself. And so I think for the first two years, really, of the show, Corey and I were just stumbling to find a way to get people to connect with us. And right. we were doing it the wrong way. We were kind of, you know, acting more than we were being genuine, I mm -hmm. guess. And uh, mm -hmm. it, it took a while before we really got into a rhythm. Uh, the, the show initially wasn't even scripted. It was just, okay, let's pick a movie, Spider-Man and X-Men. And then we would roll the camera, mm -hmm. very loosey-goosey, and then right. edit was a, a goddamn nightmare. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> we have no structure, no focus. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, eventually we, we got it to rounds. And mm -hmm. then um, from there we started scripting. And by that point, Corey's like, I'm out. There, this is too much work. We're not making a dime. We have like 200 subs. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I, I mean... I think I I started in 2012, which is long. I mean, seven years ago. Yeah. But I didn't really start until a few years ago because there would be like six months where there mm -hmm. would be no videos because we had kids and, and right. lives outside of the show. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, there, there's a lot of experimenting, a lot of growing, and it really took a long time to find my own voice. And uh -huh. that voice was me proving to people that look i'm different than right. than stuckman and johns and all these other right. big guys i i'm i'm a, a sarcastic very dry-witted person um but i had to i had to prove that so mm -hmm. and something that like i learned about your videos since like you were kind of taking me through uh kind of like how you and your your buddy kind of formulated the show and kind of the format of it like you write out pretty thorough scripts for the show from yes. like, from my experience when I was on it, which I appreciate it because it kind of helps you get into that mind space and kind of like what kind of vibe you're going for. So my question is, is since, you know, it's been years since, you know, that happened, you know, like, are you at a point now where you can be a little bit more off the cuff with it? Or do you still really need to have everything scripted so that you have everything planned out? Well, I have a lot of, I have a lot of shows, unfortunately, which is we, I'm sure you have a question later about the algorithm and YouTube and things like that. I mean, we could go there. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it, it, it's just so much. <laughs> uh, to answer your initial question, though, uh, yes, I still I do write the, the show for Movie Feuds very thoroughly. Um, and then there is off-the-cuff room when I'm on the fly filming, but I, right. I, I'd say it's 90% scripted. With mm -hmm. just if I'm thinking of something while I said something else, then I'll or or I, I'm I'm pretty to the point where not in a live conversation, I, I say the same words over and over. But mm -hmm. when I script it out, I, I'm super set on not repeating the word movie more than two or three times in a video. I'll say film or right. or something else mm -hmm. or or. And so when I do script and then record, I might catch it after the fact. So then uh -huh. I'll just. I'll, I'll tweak the sentence or something. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. It, That's pretty that. pathetic. The, I, I, <laughs> oh, you know, come on. I used to write scripts too. So. He said, he said the, the, the most truthful thing, oh, it was a great interview, by the way. I love that interview. Oh, thank you. Appreciate I didn't know anything about John and it was, it was fun to hear from you and him. So this is a great idea. Uh, oh, but you. he said, you know, YouTubers are their own worst enemy. And that so true for me, especially. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel it the same way, too, because I feel like and I'm glad that I, from everyone who I've talked to so far is like when I was talking to them about just kind of like coming up, kind of finding your voice, kind of, you know, finding your format. Basically, it seems like we all kind of have done almost very similar things, like eerily mm -hmm. similar things where, you know, like I used to actually write out scripts for reviews and have to memorize little blurbs at a time. And it would take me like an hour to shoot a video because I, <laughs> my memory was shit. Right. So and then finally, I was able to get to the point where I could be off the cuff and I can just, you know, make a, you know, video and kind of just you know, talk kind of just uh, like improv basically. Right. So for you, 
I'm glad that the script thing has worked out for you because I do feel like that is something that you can't really do. Well, yeah. I just caught something. <laughs> something that you can't really, something that you can't really do off the cuff uh, because it's something that has to be so thorough and so well planned right. out. So that's something I really appreciated about your videos where you kind of had every little thing mapped out, like you know pros, cons, you know rebuttals, yeah. all this stuff, which I thought was really great. And something I asked uh, Sean in my interview with him was since he has a family too, like you do. So yeah. I asked him, and you also have like a full time job as well. So my question is, it's like, how do you kind of maintain that balance of like work, family, and YouTube? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Most honest answer. <laughs> There's not a lot of sleep. Mm. I, I'm not doing a good job of maintaining it right now. The the show. I'm lucky if I get a video out every week now. I right. took on a lot more responsibility recently at work, so I, I, I have a lot more to do. My, my hours are pretty bad. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess, you know, in that interview, I didn't, I didn't catch your, your interview with him, uh, with Sean. Um, I should go back and watch that. But, but John said something that's very true for me, too, which is he, he doesn't review everything, and mm -hmm. I don't review probably half of what I see. Uh, I only do a feud or a script or a, just a car side review or whatever, a rant, if it's something right. that I can actually speak to and I know is going to have some sort of value uh, entertainment wise for a person. I mean, there's millions of hours of video uploaded to YouTube every yeah. minute, I think they said, or it's it's an insane number. It's ridiculous. I, I can't believe it uh, because you got podcasts and, you know, you got live streams that go on for days and it, it's, you're competing with. All of that, plus mm -hmm. you know the Hulu's, the Netflixes, the the Disney Plus, and you know whatever else is coming out next week. Yeah, there, there's just so the content I feel like has to be of some value, you know, <laughs> not just right. oh, I got a review. I got a review Terminator Dark Fate tomorrow. You know, actually it comes out. It's already out, isn't it? Yeah, it Damn. comes out today, I think. Yeah, and see, <laughs> not going to uh, now. Now. Um, Actually, does Sean Chandler review R-rated movies? I don't think he does. He has yeah. a whole. I'm pretty, sure he, I'm pretty positive he does. Yeah, I think he may have reviewed term. I know he's definitely reviewed some R-rated movies. At least I think he has. I, I know he play, He stays away from horror and some of the things that would would hurt his um, standings with YouTube. I, I remember him saying that once. Maybe it was on Twitter or something. But anyway, uh, it, it's. And I'm sure you 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 uh, deal with this too. If you're not day one with a movie review. It's just over. Yeah, it's timing gonna, is everything. It's not it's gonna get those organic views. Yeah, and, and, and the so, thing that's like crazy. Sorry to interrupt you. No, uh, yeah. Uh, the thing that's crazy, I think, is that like there's always this pressure uh, where when you have, like you said, like when a new movie comes out, especially a big movie, like just say Terminator Dark Fate comes out today. Right. I'll see that later today and I'm going to feel this pressure where as soon as I see it, I'm like, need to review it. Yeah. Because if I don't get it up immediately, I'm going to lose some views or I'm not going to get the exposure that I want. Yeah. And that built in pressure is it's always it's not the best thing. And I'm also in John's boat where I don't feel the need to review everything. I really okay. don't like I'll see what I want to see. When I first started, I was seeing everything, which was mm. just ridiculous. Like mm. I would see kids movies, horror movies, like everything that looked horrible, basically. You know, like if it, if there was a, you know, a, like an Arctic Panda 2, I would have gone to see it. Like it was, it was just ridiculous. Like I would have seen that movie. There's no value for that either. Because is it? It's like you look miserable going, on camera. Yeah. You're already going in knowing it's going to be a complete piece of crap. So yeah. who are you reviewing that movie for? Exactly. There comes a point where you have a little bit of self-respect where you're like, no, 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 I'm going to see what I want to see. And sure. they're going to enjoy that review. At least I think they will. Sure. And what your answer when you were talking about how like there's so many hours of video uploaded to YouTube so yeah. fast. My question is like compared to when you, because you said you first started in 2012, right? Yeah. So my question is, because that landscape was vastly different than it is yeah. now, especially with movie reviews. Yeah. So my question is, and I like to ask this to a lot of the reviewers who have been around for more than like four or five years is now that we have this new landscape with like so many movie reviews, we're basically inundated with movie reviews on YouTube now where there's pages and pages and pages yes. of reviews. How do you feel, you know, like how are you able to kind of stand out or like what do you do in order to stand out so that like you're not kind of just like falling into the pack and that you're able to kind of stand on your own two feet a little bit? I don't know if I'm standing out anymore. That's the that's the tricky thing. And that's that's where we can dive into the, the algorithm a little bit. Mm. Because... Um, like you, you started a new channel from scratch. Yeah. I had a second channel already dormant. I think it uh -huh. had a couple hundred subs and it was, it was called Adam's take two. And it was basically where I would put my, my things that weren't movie related. 
Mm-hmm. I've rebranded multiple times over the years. Uh, the, the channel started out just Movie Feuds. That was the name of the channel. Right. That's all we did. And then it changed to, you know, I got too big for my britches. I'm like, I'm going to call it Feud Nation. You know, it was cool. To- <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I don't remember that period of time. Yeah, there, was, uh, there was Feud Nation? It was a dark, oh, okay. it was a dark period. It, it was called Feud Nation. And then it was going to be, you know, movies and games and, you know, sports and everything. And I was going to have other hosts that would do those things. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know much about sports. I played sports, but I don't follow it. So I wouldn't speak to that. <laughs> But, you know, music feuds and, and even food feuds, you know, McDonald's versus Wendy's. Oh, wow, you were going to go I, all over the map. Was, okay. Hey, it, it's a nation, Tom. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a, a nation. It's okay. A nation, it covers right? everything. Yeah, it's everything. It's a, it's, we're global. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that didn't pan out. But uh, I, I wanted to do more than movies, and I had been. So right. it didn't make sense for the show to be called Movie Feuds because I was ranting about, uh, you know, not getting I, I was getting dry banana bread at caribou coffee so i had a, a whole like 20 minute rant on that or oh God, and i missed that <laughs> oh those are good hey those are people love the rants so um you should check those out they're good hey, you better send me a link that because i can yeah. relate to that <laughs> that's on my second that's on my second channel uh which is rebranded now adam olinger but anyways that there was there was movie feuds and it was feud nation and then i i finally decided okay youtube is punishing me because they don't know how to categorize my channel. I have, you know, these rants on stuff. I have video game coverage. I got movies. So YouTube's not really sure where I fit mm-hmm. on the related videos and all that stuff. So I, I focused on, I called it Adam Does Movies. Super simple. I focused on movie-based stuff. And I moved all my other stuff. I pulled it off and mm-hmm. put it on the second channel, which killed me. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> from a, an ego standpoint. Yeah. Like, oh, this movie review that has, you know, 200,000 200, views, zero views, zero comments. Oh, damn. Okay, that is pretty ballsy. Yeah. Yeah. So I pulled I pulled off 50% of my content, you know, lost millions of views. But it's all just superficial, you know, nonsense at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. And I re- re-uploaded it to my now second channel, Adam Olinger. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, the, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eventually get to answer your question. No, it's but okay. The, you take your time. You keep the going. The thing that... Um, that I think hurt was it was it was a double edged sword. First, I was I was killing myself by making all these shows. I had movie feuds. I had Adam rants. Right. I had car side reviews. Mm-hmm. I had uh, a new show I was doing called Movie Boss, which was a sitcom style show, <laughs> an episode. How did I miss all this stuff? Oh, I mean, this it, is gold here. <laughs> it, it, it is gold, Tom. I'm telling you, it's I'm not even stuff. being sarcastic like that. No, it, it, it's good stuff, and it doesn't get it doesn't get any attention. But I had I had Movie Boss, uh, where I played just this pompous jerk, and you know, it was kind of making fun of how you know how do we be the next Cinema Sins? And I had a I had interns and stuff. Anyway, I did ten of those. I have a show called The Cringe, which a lot of people really like. That uh, that one I, I think I, I do know. Yeah. Yeah, I play a character uh, called Khaleesi Grimes82, who is just, he's super pumped about everything that comes out. He loves everything. He's a total shill. Um, (laughs) So people would come to my channel, Adam Does Movies, they'd see Movie Boss get uploaded and The Cringe, where I'm a totally different person Mm -hmm. uh, in both those videos. And they would just sit there going, what the hell is this? Who, this is not, you know, you look at Jeremy Johns, he's done the same exact show for a decade. Mm-hmm. It's him in front of a red screen. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Minimal editing, minimal anything, you know? Mm-hmm. It's just him off the cuff. People love it. He's funny. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have to change anything. Mm-hmm. Someone like me looks at him and goes, "Oh. Okay. Yeah, but okay. see, that's, that's, that's great. Thing. That's great. Good yeah. for you." But see, that's the thing. That's what I was talking to John about. It's like, look, me, you and him, we seem to be like we're all in the same boat where we can't do the same thing for a long period of time without feeling like we need to grow. So yeah. like when we see a channel like, you know, Jeremy's where he's kind of done the same thing. And look, there's a, this is no insult to Jeremy. I'm happy that he gets to do the same yeah. thing for 10 years and he's been well, super Stockman successful. Stockman does the same thing yeah, too. Yeah, Stockman does the same thing. And they they both deliver really fun, entertaining reviews. But like, you know, I'm the kind of person, you're the kind of person, John's the kind of person where we feel like we constantly need to evolve in order to make our content better, which I don't think is a bad thing. It's just there's kind of two personalities when it comes to that. But yeah. it kind of sounded like your channel and, you know, forgive me if this sounds like it's kind of like any sort of negative connotation, but it kind of seems like you didn't know who you exactly you wanted to be when you were uploading yeah. all these different things where it was a little bit of a, like identity crisis of sorts yeah. where you're just kind of like, I'm going to test out these different personalities, see what clicks. I mean, did you find kind of that like one identity that you feel like people were connecting with the most that you kind of narrowed in on? No, 
I, I liked I liked doing all of it, and I still like doing all of it. And uh, you know, it, the thing that really sucks is you, you're trying to grow new shows right. to an old audience or to an audience that doesn't necessarily know you who's coming in. So they see movie feuds. I like that. Well, then there's not another movie feuds for a month. So in between that, there's a bunch of car set reviews, the right. cringe, and all these other stuff. So then they're out. They, they're <laughs> like, I did not sign up for this. I don't know what this guy is. Mm-hmm. But then there's other audience that, that love this new stuff. Right. Uh, but it was killing my channel. And then so you had that coupled with YouTube's new algorithm that I don't know what it is. I, no one I, does. It's like it's like the cloud. No one knows exactly what it is. No one knows what it, is. <laughs> no one knows what it does. Supposedly, you, you were getting hurt for swearing uh, for adult content. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But then once again, I removed more of my stuff from my main channel. Now my my new approach that I've been doing for six months months, which hasn't helped at all. It's actually only hurt me more. Is focus on movie feuds and car side reviews. Only movies. Those are the only two shows. Mm-hmm. So People know exactly what they're going to get. No surprises. Mm-hmm. My second channel, Adam Olinger, has the adult stuff, the, the cringe movie boss, okay. rants, the swearing, the, the more, I'd say, not necessarily more authentic me, but the more uncensored. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, basically, Adam does movies as PG-13. Okay. And that's R. And that's... But I feel like that's good because you're actually like separating the two channels so that people know if they want, you know, this part of you, they yeah. can go to this channel. If they want just movie stuff, uh, they can go to that channel where yes. that feels like nice and organized. So I feel like that's something that it may not, you know, re- you know, make dividends at first, but I feel yeah. like eventually that's going to catch on because consistency is everything. I feel like that's the most yeah. underrated aspect of any YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. It's, it's just like if you're not consistent with your videos and I've suffered from that because, mm-hmm. you know, like my consistency, it's either like on the money or sometimes I'll take you know, week breaks, months break, you know, in like previous interviews, you know, I, when I was in college, I basically took like a six month to a year break. And that like basically destroyed my channel because like, yeah, yeah, because like I came back and everyone was just like gone. It was like a ghost town and there was like tumbleweeds blowing around. I didn't know what was (laughs) happening, but I was like, you know what? I had fun in college. I got my education. So I have no regrets here, but also it was just very enlightening to me where just like people are counting on you every week to come up with that content. And if you're not giving it to them for an extended period of time, they're just going to like cast you out. They're going to throw you away. So I feel like that's kind of the secret thing that not a lot of people talk about when they're like, how do you start a successful YouTube channel? It's like, even if your content is complete garbage, if, yeah. if that's how you're starting out, my main thing is consistency. It's like consistency will not only show people that you're here to stay and that you're going to you know, be someone who's reliable every week to give them content they may like they might like, but consistency also allows you to improve yourself where the more videos that you're making, the better quality videos you're going to have. You're going to have better editing. Maybe you have, you know, you get more confidence on camera. So you have more of a personality. Like I know that happened for me. The more I did videos, more comfortable I felt, the more I let some of my personality fly. Same goes for you. I'm sure at first you were kind of maybe a little bit quieter, a little more timid. That tends to happen with people who are just starting out. But consistency really is the name of the game. And I feel like for you, you know, like you, for the most part, you've been very consistent. I mean, yeah, you have your little breaks like I have, but for the most part, I mean, you're running two channels and you're putting up consistent content on those channels that isn't exactly, you know, they're, they're not crap videos. They're well edited, they're thought out, they're extensive. So I feel like that kind of consistency and that, you know, consistency in terms of quality, that's going to keep people around. Yeah, it's, it's, it's doing okay. <laughs> the second channel doesn't make any money right now because I have to hit that 4,000 watch hours. Yeah, that's a new thing, yeah. Which is a weird thing that, that that's just flat what it is. Because mm-hmm. if you're doing a podcast and your show is two hours of podcasting, well, my average show is five minutes long. That's a lot more, you know... You have to put out a lot more content to get to that 4,000 as opposed to one podcast. <laughs> yeah, they're basically making it so like you need to be on for like a year, year and a half before you hit that number. And that you have to have that coupled with like the 1,000 subscribers. I think it's still the number before you can apply to it's be a part of 1,000 subs, yeah. I, I, I mean, I hit that threshold that threshold very, very quickly. But the uh, the watch hours, I think I'm at like 3,000. So I have another 1,000 to go. So I have to just churn out some more. Yeah, you'll get there. And something that like is very important to most YouTube channels is the audience because not only are they the people watching your videos and coming back to watch your videos, yeah. but often they can give you suggestions that really help improve your channel and not only yeah. just good feedback. So for you, other than giving you ideas for like movie feuds or you know different ones you can do or different reviews you can do, like what's something the audience has given you that you feel like has been really helpful and pretty priceless? 
I don't know if helpful is the right word. It's almost a hindrance. They, the audience is kind of like me. They, they want me to do a lot of different stuff. Mm -hmm. And I just don't have the bandwidth to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. So they'll be like, you should do movie feuds on actor versus actor, which I've thought about doing for many years or, mm -hmm. or director versus director. Right. Which would be great. Mm -hmm. uh, you should do stand up comedy stuff. You should do, you know, they, they, they just, they, they, they throw everything out there. Spectrum yeah. of things. It's like, I, I don't have time to do anything. <laughs> uh, they, I think the biggest thing with the audience is the encouragement more than anything else you could be having you know I, I put out Zombieland one versus two last week you know fully scripted put in all the work you know 10 hours of work yeah. didn't even hit a thousand views yet mm -hmm. that's incredibly disheartening and the last time I put out a feud was probably a month or so back mm -hmm. uh, I mean it speaks to a couple different things I think my audience even though the number says I don't know, 58,000 subs or something like that. The real number is probably closer to what's on my second channel, which is just shy of 2,000 subscribers. Mm -hmm. That's the true base. The, everything else is window dressing. So when people come up and say, wow, you have you know, you know, 100,000 subs or 200,000 subs, and then you go look at their channel and their average view is like uh, you know, 2,000 views a video. Right. It's like, uh, well, well, who cares? How many mm -hmm. subs? Of if it's all kind of BS anyways. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I was talking with that, uh, talking about that rather with John, where we both noticed the same thing. Where like, there's channels that have like 400,000 subscribers, but then you look at their video views, it's like 5,000, 10,000 views. So you're like, I feel like there's a huge discrepancy between there is, like, yeah. ha or like, you know, just complete difference between the amount of subscribers that they have and the amount of people who are actually watching their videos. Like yeah. maybe there's just a lot more casual viewers who kind of check in every now and again, but also something I think that hurts subscriber counts and also like view counts, you know, also I think is that YouTube suggests, you know, videos for you, which it can be very helpful. But at the same time, like I know, I think I'm subscribed to channels, but then I realized it's just like YouTube just suggesting channels yeah. that I tend to watch a lot. So it's almost like you are subscribed when right. you're not really right. subscribed. Yeah, I get that all the time. Mm -hmm. I, I can't make sense of it anymore. Every time <laughs> I upload a video, for the last six months, I will lose on average 10 subscribers on my main channel. Mm -hmm. And they, since they've done that uh, terrible update to their dashboard, they have oh, this... I always go back to the creator classic. <sighs> I know. Always. Does anybody like the new version? I, I hate the new version. I'm and not a huge fan. They forced it on everybody, and there's it's, it's like 50% of it's still missing, so then it reverts you back anyways. <laughs> yeah, like when it says, like, go back to creator classic, in my mind, those words become go back to the good one. <laughs> <laughs> everything is hidden now I know. but the one thing that's not hidden is the giant number when you go to the uh the dashboard and it mm -hmm. says your subscribers and then it'll have in red or in green yeah. the amount that you've gained or lost and every time i go to that dashboard it's like negative 100 in red for the yeah. month like, mm -hmm. oh what what are you doing to me youtube you are yeah, punishing me every time and part of me thinks that their dead accounts or inactive accounts and what YouTube's doing is something triggers when you upload a video and it just kind of like goes through and filters some of them out because mm -hmm. I can't make any sort of sense of what's happening at that point. Yeah, I think John said he had his little conspiracy theory, which actually actually felt like it had some credence where he's like, I think YouTube kind of looks for accounts that like haven't watched your videos or maybe haven't been active in a certain period of time. And if it reaches that certain time threshold, they just kind of delete that account and sure. in turn you lose subscribers. So, I mean, I don't know what it is. I don't really try to question it. It's just because I ran into the same problem you had with my old yeah. channel before I kind of moved to this new channel where, you know, I kind of kept staying between that range mm -hmm. of like 11,000 and 12,000. And no yeah. matter how many videos I uploaded, you know, or how much I felt like I improved the content, it's like I would every time I uploaded a video, it's like I would lose five to 10 subscribers mm -hmm. and not know why. But yeah. I would still always stay in the same range. Like I would never dip below 11,000. I would never go above 12,000 and just got to that stalemate point yeah. where I was like, I feel like if I don't kind of uh, refresh this channel or go to a new channel, like I'm, this is where I'm going to be for like the right. rest of my it's days. Flat. You know, I'm going to be in this like purgatory, this YouTube purgatory exactly. for the rest of my days. And frankly, like, you know, going to this new channel, it's been refreshing because it's like now I know everyone who's watching actually really wants to watch yeah. my videos and you're seeing like positive numbers. You're not seeing those negative numbers anymore. Yeah. So it's kind of like 
feeling what it was like to first initially go on YouTube again, for which for me is refreshing. Yeah, the subscribers may not be skyrocketing, but also I'm seeing positive growth. And for me, that's way better and far more encouraging than it was on my old channel where I kind of felt disheartened from making any sort of content because I felt like it wasn't getting the exposure of the audience that I wanted it to. And, you know, you're putting in hours of work into these videos and you're putting in, you know, some quality stuff, yeah. or at least what you think is quality stuff. And it's not kind of reaching the numbers you want. So yeah. that's kind of where I felt like we both were, where we needed yes. to make that jump. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, just, like, I was waiting for YouTube to just cut the foreplay and just drop my sub count down right. to 2000 on my main channel. Just be like, this is legitimately right. what you have for something. No, I remember because yeah, I was cool. the, OK, yeah. let's grow from there. Yeah. And I remember there was that period of time where like YouTube was like going through every channel and axing like hundreds yeah. of subscribers. I remember like it was like a death march, basically, yeah. where like every channel was losing hundreds of subscribers a week and like no one knew why. And people were just thinking, is it, you know, dead accounts? Is this YouTube just kind of like, I don't know, going haywire? Like no one really knew what was going on. Yeah. But like something that I always like to ask people, especially reviewers, is like when you're growing with, you know, subscriber counts, when you're really getting that kind of wider audience that you've been wanting to get, there's always this kind of conundrum that you find yourself in where like, do I keep doing what I'm doing? Do I try to improve it a little bit more? Do I try to change this a little bit more? Like when you were starting to gain that wide audience, like were you asking these kinds of questions for yourself? Yeah, that was the, um, I think that was when Frozen versus Tangled just, I mean, it went viral. I think it's at 3 million views right now. Yeah. Um, and I have a couple that have that have hit really large marks, and every time it does that, you just question the world. You know, you're like, why? Why did this happen? What's right. going on? Right. And it's always the dumbest solution. It was just it was frozen versus tangled. Had nothing to do with the quality of the video. Had nothing to do with who was in the video. It was just straight up the key term: frozen versus tangled. Frozen was. A phenomenon when it hit theaters. Mm -hmm. uh, every video that had the frozen topic was doing well because of it. And I just, I, I hooked into something that people wanted to know. The last Disney movie was Tangled, the new one's Frozen. <laughs> so every, mm -hmm. every, you know, Tom, Dick, and Harry watched it. The problem is when you start to, to look at it like that, to think, okay, how do I cash in on this concept? That, that's when you've just you, you've completely taken your eye off the ball of the long game and you are focused on this short little burst of energy that that takes place on YouTube, which is this viral sensation. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I think I have probably four or five frozen versus something videos because of that. And none of them even did remotely as close to uh, that one. However, if you want to get a lot of views, do something on Spider-Man. It just there's no. There's no loss. Mm -hmm. You will always get a bump from Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. Just or just like any sort of superhero content, like yeah. you know, whether you're like talking about heroes, villains, like whatever it happens to be, like Marvel, DC, all that stuff. Like yeah. heroes are in right now, and they're gonna be in for a long period of time. Yeah. So if you do any sort of content about that, you'll get an uptick of some sort. And that's what's such a bummer about it, though, too, because you know, uh, Sean Chandler, who is that? That's his name, right? Sean yeah. Chandler. He kind of came out of nowhere for me. I, I, I hadn't even heard of him a year ago and then suddenly he's just like on every search result ever mm -hmm. he wisely found a uh an outlet which was just ranking every movie ranking yeah. things, and he just went all in mm -hmm. and to a redundant level and he will be the first to admit he's he redundantly does it spider-man ranked from best to worst and then the next spider-man movie comes out yeah he ranks them all again yeah. and then he'll rank all the mcus again and again and mm -hmm. I will sit back and go, I hate you so much for what you're doing. <laughs> you are you are the worst on YouTube. You are the worst. And but you're his, also um, a mad genius. <laughs> he's also a genius. And yeah. his numbers are just blew past mine in like yeah. three weeks. It's like, you know, now he's at 100 and who knows, 140,000 subs. Mm -hmm. um, and he's got a great personality. So whatever. I guess <laughs> oh. that helps too. <laughs> but see, like, that's the thing. It's like he found his, his niche yeah. where like, where like I don't think a lot like there's ranking videos on YouTube, but not nearly as consistent as his have been. And like and also I give him a lot of credit. And I think I told him this was that like it's not easy to consistently do like ranking videos because those, those take a lot out of you. I mean, yes. sometimes like he's ranking entire franchises that are like eight, nine movies and he's talking pretty in depth about each one. Not to mention mm -hmm. he's putting in a lot of editing like his videos always look really well edited polished, and slick. Yes. So like I'm just imagining how long this is taking to make. And luckily, you know, he has a wide audience where like the work is worth it. But I 
I can only imagine when he was first starting up, like how frustrating that would have been. And for you, like you said, yeah. And for you, like you put in the word too, like you just said, like, you know, you you spend like 10 hours, you know, making like a movie feud video. And when you don't see that the views kind of reflect that work that you put in, it's disheartening. And I get that. But like, also, I feel like that's the kind of content that eventually people will respond to because Mm -hmm. there are a lot of amateur YouTubers out there who maybe don't have the best equipment. Maybe they haven't found their personality yet. So I feel like once people see someone who actually has a little bit more of a polished persona or a polished kind of channel, uh, I think that they'll latch onto that more, like which I, which is the reason why I think people will latch onto your channel more. I think while they'll latch onto channels like John's and Sean's and Chris's and Jeremy's, uh, because we all have these kind of polished personas. We all know we've been here for a while. We know the name of the game. We yeah. know what to do. Um, and I feel like that's going to stand out amongst the pack. But of course, the pack is massive nowadays. Yeah. So it's like if you're really not kind of, you know uploading your videos in that right time frame it's like you're gonna you're gonna see some numbers go down so yeah that is that's one thing um and and you're spot on uh i think i had it right seven years ago or whatever when the show was called movie feuds and if Mm -hmm. i would have just done movie feuds put them out every week i'd probably be a much better place than i am now but i'm my own worst enemy and i'm the first to admit that and i really should just focus on movie feuds every week Mm -hmm. And if I did superheroes every week, it would, you know, probably be probably be great. But I like talking about other goddamn movies. Everybody's yeah. all in on superheroes. Come on, let's get something else. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, also it's like when you when you said that was that uh, like you don't want to talk about superheroes, but like when I was talking to Sean, he was saying how like you know I posted a review of this movie that hasn't even come out yet that people don't even know about, but that I wanted to talk to them about because yeah. I know I have an audience that'll do that. So like he's kind of doing like you know five for them one for me right. like that kind of thing so like just say you went down that route with superheroes yeah. where you did like superhero feuds villain feuds whatever it happens to be mm-hmm. you you know you could do those where like all of a sudden you're getting nice upticks but then you can also do feuds that you like that you're passionate about so it's like you know i'll do like five or six for them i'll do one for me you know like where like you're able to kind of please yourself while also pleasing them that kind of thing i feel like the audience would slowly watch a man die in front yeah. of <laughs> by the time i get to the 30th superhero movie you'd see like a benjamin button effect over like six months <laughs> Yeah, I had a point before and I completely lost it. It's so. okay. <laughs> Move on from it. So while you're trying to oh, ruminate, oh, sorry, to say, as far as the oversaturated market goes, right. here's okay. what really boggles my mind. I will put out a movie feud. Um, let's say it's Avengers versus Inf- Infinity War versus Endgame or something. And it'll be a week or two later. And now there's multiple people that do these movie feuds uh, videos they have their own shows and they're straight up the exact same show as mine which is whatever is fine i don't have a copyright on it but i will search it and mine will be down at like the bottom of the search even though it was the first topic to do it and it is literally titled the search that i searched for mm-hmm. and there will be 10 or 11 others that will be above mine and they'll have five times as many views mm-hmm. and i will have no idea why no, I think that's I think that's because like I've had a couple people tell me this actually is that they think it's like channels that have like these huge amount of subscribers, huge amount of views, like they feel like that YouTube may or may not kind of prioritize those even if they are uploaded late because they know that those videos are going to find like an audience. Like I know I've had the same, you know, experience where like I'll post a review before like anyone else basically. Mm. And, you know, initially it'll actually be in like the first like three or four videos where I'm like, okay, great, right. people actually see it. And then I check back a couple days later, it's on like page two, you know, like where it just kind of yeah. gets buried. And I I can I can honestly see that where like they want to kind of prioritize those channels that maybe have like a million subscribers or 300,000 subscribers because they they know that those videos are going to get the hits that they want. But also, you know, if that is what they're doing, I'm not you know, I I really disagree with that because there are a lot of channels that are great, such as yours, where like they need exposure, you know, like where like it'd be great if they can kind of boost those up or something like that. Or it would be cool if like maybe like once a month you get like one free kind of boost where YouTube kind of like spotlights one of your videos or something like that to kind of keep people around, even if like you had to pay maybe like two or three bucks. I don't know whatever it happens to be. But that'd be a great little thing to do to kind of satiate those people who are really trying to kind of find that spotlight and find that exposure in an oversaturated market like we've been talking about Mm -hmm. but you know obviously we can't confirm nor deny that youtube is doing that i feel like this channel has now become youtube conspiracy theories (laughs) i'm sure they are doing that but the plot twist i'm pointing out is these people have less subs than me and they're Mm -hmm. higher in the ranks that's where it's just confusing okay your video out two weeks later somehow it got a huge and the keywords and stuff, I'm, I'm all in on that. So I, I don't yeah. really, uh, anyway, that was just a 
a, another side tangent that I just can't understand. Anyway, enough about my past. <laughs> my struggles in this crazy tipsy topsy world. Well, to end this video on a more positive note, like what, like, you know, for the thing I always like to ask last is what I feel like a lot of people are watching these videos for other than these funny rants and funny tangents is that like what for up, up and coming channels, you know, channels that are really trying to find their audience or people who are just trying to figure out how do I start a YouTube channel? Or in this case, how do I start a review channel that, you know, gains traction, gains an audience, you know, like what tips of the trade would you have for people who are trying to kind of hone their craft here? Don't do it. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, be just the, the tip I always get, uh, give is I, th I think ones that you guys already covered, which is, um, have a voice, have a unique voice. Mm -hmm. Know that on camera, you are going to come off 20% less interesting than you are in real life. So, so put a little bit into it, you know, just spice it up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, have some polish. You are competing with trillions of hours of video and and personalities out there so uh, obviously we don't have budgets this is very you know rinky dink operation I'm, I'm i'm talking straight into my laptop at this point i don't have a cool yeti you know thing or anything mm -hmm. this is all on my show i have you know i have a clip mic i try to muffle the echo i have studio lights you can get them cheap just know that you have to put the work in you know, treat it as a job I always tell people I have multiple jobs and I'm, I'm a, I have my full-time job and then I have my second job, which is YouTube. Mm -hmm. This one pays far less, but I'm far more passionate about it. So, mm -hmm. you know, there, there, there's a lot to digest, but to, don't go into it, you know, half cocked, mm -hmm. be, be willing to put in the work and, and just be honest with, with people and with yourself. Oh, I mean, I couldn't agree more with that. So, I mean, I really like what you said actually about how YouTube kind of takes away some of your personality. You know how like they say like the camera like, makes you gain 10 or 20 pounds? It does that, but yeah. also takes away like 20% of your personality. Yeah. <laughs> Where like, because I remember the first time I ever turned on a video camera to make a review. This was back in 2008, Jesus, I'm old. But yeah. like We're back old. in 2008 where I turned on like one of my rinky dink, you know, digital cameras. I just remember initially, like, I was so shy about it because it felt like like a voyeur was like staring at me. Like, mm -hmm. I just felt like I felt like creeped on. So like initially it took so long to kind of get over that. And I feel like, you know, like you said, you know, it's like you want to find your voice. You want to, you know, make sure that you're all in. This is not something you can just like kind of casually or lackadaisically say like, oh, I'm just going to start a YouTube channel and it's going to be <laughs> great. Like it like. You can't say it like that. You know, back in the day, maybe you could say that because right. not a lot of people are on YouTube. You're like, yeah, I'm going to make a YouTube channel. It's going to be great. It's going to get like millions of subscribers. But nowadays, YouTube is such a popular place and such a popular place for people who actually want to start a business. Mm -hmm. I mean, people make full on livings off of YouTube. So everyone kind of wants to jump in on that boat and, you know, take that for a ride. But like if they realize like this is like you said, a full time job, like you need to go, go all in, you know, get some minimal equipment to make your stuff look good. But honestly, the key ingredient, like you said, have that voice, have that specific personality that's specific to you so that you stand out because a lot of people tend to copy other people because those people yes. are successful. Right. But like when you emulate people like that, when you try to kind of copy their voice, you kind of come off a little bit fraudulent and you kind of come off as a little bit fake. Right. And I want someone when I'm watching someone who feels authentic, where I don't watch someone that reminds me of them. Exactly. Like I watch you, I only think of Adam Ollinger. When I think of when I watch Chris or Jeremy or John or Sean, I'm never thinking about anyone else. They are their own unique voices. And I feel like if anyone who's starting a YouTube channel is going to do, you know, uh, you know, reviews or whatever it happens to be, like they need to be specific to themselves. Be your beautiful, unique snowflake and just go for it. <laughs> <laughs> and to piggyback off the job thing. Do not treat YouTube like it's a healthy source of revenue because mm -hmm. it is not. There yeah. is no way you could possibly expect to make what you made last month, the month after, because YouTube is such a fickle beast. Just like we're talking about with the algorithms, what, what I'm making now on YouTube is less than what I was making four years ago on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Any other job that would be asinine. You, know, mm -hmm. you don't ask your boss for a decrease in pay year over year. You usually get a little bit of a boost. Right. It doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. It's it just you, you got to go in just passionately. When, when we budget out our bills and stuff every month, YouTube is not even mentioned. That's mm -hmm. just extra bonus cash that we can maybe use. Mm -hmm. I think that's important for uh, younger generations that think that, this guy's streaming Fortnite Let's Plays, you know, mm. today, and he's making half a million dollars a year. Well, for every success story, there are 
you know, hundreds of thousands of people that have completely <laughs> failed to, to reach four people. Mm -hmm. Couldn't agree more with that. And I could honestly talk to you all day about this stuff. I mean, we can go down the YouTube algorithm rabbit hole. We can just talk about movies. It's always fun talking to you, man. I really appreciate yep. you taking the time here, talking to us about your YouTube channel, the highs, the lows, kind of what you're up to now and kind of your background. Really appreciate that. And for people who want to try to find you on YouTube, on social media, how can they find you? Adam does movies. Just search it or Adam Olinger. Hopefully it'll come up on the first page. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. I'm well, not, that's where you can find him. I'm completely off the grid. Yeah, yeah he has no idea where he is. I don't know. I can't <laughs> he doesn't know who me. he is. He doesn't know where he is. I can't find me. <laughs> but I'll put the links to his uh, his YouTube channel in, or YouTube channels rather, in my description for you all to click and subscribe to his channel. Love his stuff. Adam, thank you for coming on the show today. Really appreciate it. And uh, try to have yourself a fun, spooky Halloween. Oh, it's going to be a good time. My, my son's going as... Uh, I don't know what version. There's so many versions of Spider-Man. I don't even know what version he is, but he's he's one of the black suit versions, and he looks just awesome. Oh, what from like the Spider Verse one? I don't I don't know what it's from. No, it's not <laughs> Spider. It's not Spider Noir or um or it's Miles. Not the, it's not the 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 Homecoming. What's the Homecoming two called? Uh, the Spider Monkey thing. Yeah, it's not Spider Monkey. I I don't know. There, there's so many versions of the costume, <laughs> but it's awesome. And well, that's I good. I kind of want it for myself, but I don't know if I don't know if the the form would be as as, as nice. Are you dressing up as anything? No, I was gonna go as I was gonna go as Logan, like you know, you know, white tank Logan with the claws, and then I was just like, eh, this right. isn't about me. It's not about me anymore. <laughs> Halloween is always about you. It's your day to be selfish <laughs> and spooky. Yeah. yeah, like I'm I'm the kind of person that like I'll put out a bowl that's empty that says please take one so people just think it's <laughs> so people just think it's already been taken and I get to have some peace and quiet. <laughs> it's clever. Right? It's not terrible. Take that tech. Give a give a candy, take a candy sort of yeah. a thing. Or just leave like a couple like candy bars in there and just be like, oh man, this one's really been hit, you know. <laughs> yeah. My my daughter's the the Grim Reaper, which is pretty sweet. Um, sorry, I know you did the outro already, but I feel like we didn't candidly talk. No, about no it's it's fine. We didn't talk about Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, I showed them the Frighteners, and I think they kind of liked it. But I, I recommend watching the Frighteners if you haven't seen it. It's a it's a fantastic Ghostbusters esque Peter Jackson directed movie that came out. Right. I want to say early two thousands. Uh, really, really fun movie though. The All right. You, you've heard it here, people. Watch the, the Frighteners. Watch the Frighteners. Don't watch sleep on the Frighteners anymore. <laughs> Don't sleep on the Frighteners. Dress up as whatever Spider-Man you want and leave two candies in the bowl. <laughs> that's what the takeaway from this video. That's, that's but, the entire takeaway. The entire takeaway. But anyway, for the I'll try to like end this for the third time, but it's just too much fun. All right. So just have an awesome Halloween, Adam. Again, thank you for coming on the show. And I hope to talk to you soon, man. Anytime, buddy. Take care. You too.